So I just wanted to talk about um, just a little side project, really, that I've been working on for the last couple of years. Um, it's just it's just kind of like something that I invented out of necessity and uh, just kind of caught on. Um, and the the thing is called unpackage.com. Uh, so it's this website that is basically a it's a CDN for everything on NPM, um, and uh, it's, it's basically just a proxy. So the, the whole idea behind this site was, uh, and why is it taking so long? The whole idea behind the site was, um, yeah, no, I'm on the Wi-Fi. It's, I'm not sure what, what, the, what was wrong. Uh, the whole idea was, um, so, you know, there's a, there are CDNs for JavaScript. Um, I think the very first one ever to run was like Google. They booted their own little CDN. Um, and everybody was loading jQuery back in the days. I think they hosted like six or seven JavaScript libraries on their CDN. Um, and then probably about four or five years ago, uh, Cloudflare uh, introduced this thing called CDNJS. You probably heard of CDNJS. Uh, and the idea is that, you know, it's a, it's a Git-based CDN. So everything that is on the CDN is also in their Git repo on GitHub. <coughs> uh, just let that sink in for a second. So, uh, so about a couple years ago, Ryan and I, uh, we were, we were developing React Router and, uh, it started getting popular and people were like, Hey, can I get the UMD build on a CDN somewhere? So I was like, yeah, sure. No, no problem. So I tried cloning CDNJS. Um, it, it, it takes about a half an hour to clone it. Um, I, I, I was going to do it now, but it would, it would, it would easily go way past uh, my lightning talk. And then it takes about two or three minutes to sort of check out a branch, uh, just to check out a branch. And so I thought, surely there must be a better way uh, to do a CDN. Um, in fact, we push our UMD builds to NPM, all right? We push our, our UMD builds, for example, of React Router. Uh, you can see uh, we push our UMD builds of React Router right to uh, NPM in this UMD directory. And so what I thought was, what if we had a website where you could just go and you could basically browse everything that's on NPM um, and get everything from NPM on a CDN. Um, you know, they told me the internet was slow in Australia, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't believe them until I got here. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's got a ways to go. Um, luckily, at this point, that should be cached. Ooh, see the wonders of a CDN, right? Uh, so the, so the cool thing is, you know, Cloudflare is actually hosting this project, uh, uh, for me, they're, they're sponsoring this project uh, on the front end and, and Heroku on the back. So the whole idea of a CDN, right, is that um, you've, got, uh, you've got origin servers that are serving up the content, and then you've got these leaf nodes or these edge nodes that are all around the world so that when I need a, a certain resource, I don't have to go all the way to, you know, wherever the origin server is hosted on AWS or something to get that resource. Instead, I have, you know, a, a, an edge server right here in Australia or in, in other places in the world where I can pull down this file a lot more quickly. Um, so you basically push out your, your files. Um, and so Unpackage is this idea where, you know, everything on NPM is being pushed out to these edge servers constantly. Um, it's, it's been growing quite a bit in the last couple of years. I pulled down some stats just 10 seconds ago before I popped up here. Um, this last week, we served almost 500 million requests. Uh, the past month, we served 2.3 billion requests and 28 terabytes of data, um, which are numbers that, like, for a, for a side project, just kind of, like, boggle my mind. I don't even understand yet fully what a terabyte is, and now we're serving 28 terabytes. Um, and, and, and it's still a long way to go. CDNJS is still probably like 200, si you know, 200 times the size of, of Unpackage. Um, but tonight I just wanted to kind of like explore um, uh, something that's kind of interesting about Unpackage. And it's kind of a use case that I didn't really intend uh, when I actually built it. As I said, I just built it so we could serve these UMD bundles. Um, but people are actually, you know, they look at Unpackage and they look at it like it's kind of like a, a file browser for NPM, right? I mean, if you look at this URL, uh, you know, I'm, I've, I've, I've got, um, you know, I'm serving everything from the React Router 4.1.1 package, um, and, and then the rest of the URL is like a, is like a file path. Um, and so that sparks some people's imaginations, and some people are like, well, if it's just a file path, um, like, why do I need my node modules? Why couldn't I just load everything over the network? Um, again, I'm not suggesting you do this in production, 
Um, this is, this is purely just kind of like an experiment. It's kind of like an interesting, kind of like a what if. Um, so I'm, I'm welcoming, you know, feedback here and ideas, but I just kind of wanted to show you a few demos of how you might, uh, you know, go about building a site um, without actually installing anything to your machine first, right? Maybe, maybe, NP maybe NPM install, uh, you know, in the next few years is something that we won't have to do. I don't know. Um, so, so here are a few demos. Um, so the first one is just sort of a basic React demo, okay? Um, so, you know, there are a lot of people who sort of complained when React came out, like, oh, React is so hard to get started with. Um, you know, I've got two script tags here, one for React, one for React DOM. Again, these are the UMD builds, right? So we're just building out to globals. Um, and then I've got the Babel standalone build. Um, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, I put my code in a script type text equals Babel, and I've got all my JSX and all my goodness. So I can just, uh, let's see, so I'm going to change into the basic... Sorry, uh, unpackage demos. Uh, serve this file and load it over the network. And so you can see we make a couple of uh, network calls and, uh, you know, hello from React 15.5.4. Um, so that's not incredibly interesting. We can, uh, we can probably do better. Um, dang it. You stopped crossing your fingers, didn't you? You stopped. I know you did. I'm going to have to punch the yellow cable here. All right. Yeah, just hold it. Just hold it and hit the yellow cable whenever it goes out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so uh, how many people have heard of System.js? Yeah, it's a pain in the... to deal with. Um, but it's actually kind of cool, right? So System.js is a client-side module loader, meaning, meaning it's a module loader that runs in the browser. So here we've got one script tag that's loading up system.js, um, and then we load up a little bit of config. So our config, this is basically just taking our UMD builds and, uh, you know, uh, putting them in a system.js config. So we d basically tell system.js, here's where you get Babel and React and React DOM from. Um, anytime I say npm colon, uh, you're going to go and get them from unpackage. Um, so this is system.js. So let's go up to system.js, react, bundle, we'll serve that. Again, no npm install going on here, we're just loading everything right over the network, um, and we're loading the exact same bundles, except this time we're loading it via system.js, via client-side module loader. So you think, hmm, that's kind of interesting. If I had a client-side module loader, could I use it to load modules instead of just UMD builds, instead of just globals? Um, so let's take a look at what that would look like. So I've got a system.js react demo. Uh, so, you know, the plot thickens. Um, so here we're loading system.js on a script tag. Um, and then let's take a look at the config this time. So the config this time is we've got react, react dom, and we've still got Babel. Except this time we're telling, uh, we're not using the Babel, we're not using any global builds here. We're not using any UMD builds. Uh, we're telling system.js, I realize that the screen is blank. We're telling system, we're telling, oh, geez, Ryan, why do I even bring you on this? All right, all right. Thank you, yeah, there's a delay, thank you. I'm under, I'm under the pressure. Okay, um, so, so Babel is actually transpiling this stuff on the fly, and we're loading Babel using modules. Again, we're not loading Babel using a global build, and I curse the day that I ever decided to. Okay, so let's see. So let's load this one up. Oh, come on, refresh. Refresh. Wow. Any of you ever have this problem with the... Uh, oh, I'm still in React Bundle. <laughs> Sys, React. Okay, now serve that one. Okay. So this is using modules. Client-side module loader. Refresh. Okay, woo! That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of packages that we loaded over the network. But again, it's, it's a client-side, like it's a... It's a client-side module loader, so what would you expect? It's going in and fetching a module, looking at the requires or the import statements inside that module. They're going fetching more modules, then fetching more, and then fetching more, right? Um, you, could, you could do that whole thing, you know, at build time. You could analyze all of that stuff statically ahead of time, um, or you could just do it kind of at runtime, which I think is kind of cool, right? This, is, this kind of gets back to feeling like, Oh yeah, this feel, this is what the web felt like when I kind of started developing for the web, right? I just dropped a couple strip, script tags in the page and like I just went. Uh, again, I'm not suggesting you use this in production, but I do think it's kind of interesting. Um, 
uh, one thing that's interesting about this approach is you actually have to make sure that all of your dependencies, dependencies are, speci uh, are specified um, inside your system.js map. No worries, I'm going to bring up the next one. I'm going to skip the Angular demo because it's, um, there's, just, there's just more of the same. Um, this is an interesting demo. This is the get libs demo. I promise I only have two more demos. So get libs. Uh, so I'm going to serve this one. So check out this HTML file. Uh, there's a guy, uh, he, he, he develops like ActiveX widgets. Um, he wrote this library called getlibs, published it as an npm package, which means it's available on unpackage, right? And so now you just, just stick a script tag up here that says unpackage.com slash getlibs, and you're done. And now you system, uh, so it loads system.js with a bunch of like really, really common like settings like, okay, uh, we're going to compile stuff using Babel, we're going to let you use modules, ESX modules, um, we're going to, um, you know, ba basically we're going to understand uh, CommonJS, we're going to understand AMD, we're going to understand all your different module formats. Um, so you just use get libs, and it's not coming back yet. Come on back. And, and so... I mean, you, it's literally just the script tag, import your main JS, and you've got modules, and JSX, and ES6, and everything. It's kind of interesting, right? Like, is your imagination starting to, like, kind of turn a little bit, right? It's kind of, it's kind of interesting. Um, maybe there's a future where we're delivering modules entirely via the network, or at least our dependencies, right? We're delivering, um, you know, kind of a shared dependency graph. Um, via something like Unpackage, right? And if it's a CDN, you know, basically every one of us in this room right now who's building an app with React, uh, you know, they, they go to Atlassian.com, they go to, uh, you know, ThinkMill, they go to, you know, whatever other sites, they go to reacttraining.com, and every single time they're downloading React. Um, what if they only downloaded React one time and React DOM one time, no matter what site they were visiting. If we were all using a shared CDN, that, that's the power of caching. That's the power of a real CDN, right? Um, let me show you one uh, use case that I think is kind of interesting for production, and then I'll sit down. So this one is Webpack. A lot of you are probably using Webpack for your, uh, for your build. Um, so I'm just going to run Webpack, run, get the build running. Um, you can see from my Webpack config here, um, it's a pretty standard thing. I'm just building a bundle into the, uh, into the build directory. Um, using some Babel here, and then I'm using this module CDN Webpack plugin. So this thing is interesting because it'll actually look at your code, right? So I've got my same old React app. Um, it'll actually look at your code and it'll say, ah, I see you're using React and React DOM. Um, maybe I could just get those off the CDN. Maybe I could just get those off of Unpackage, right? So if we actually go into the build here and we look at index.html, um, and we look at the script tags that are generated, it's fetching React, and React DOM off of the CDN, um, and then it's not including those in your bundle, right? So the bundle is just your specific application code, and it's taking all of the shared dependency code from the CDN. Um, so that's actually one way that it's really, really easy to get started using uh, Unpackage in production if you wanted to. Um, if you're using Webpack as well, you just drop the plug in, and, uh, and away you go. So anyway, again, this is all very sort of experimental. It's all for development. It's all just for fun. Unpackage is completely open source. Go to github.com slash unpackage. Um, and uh, again, my name is Michael Jackson. I work with Ryan. We work on React Training. Thank you very much.